You know that feeling you get when you're like, yeah, I'm gonna clean that up, I'm gonna do it, I swear I'm gonna do it, and it takes you like a whole week to finally get it started or some motivation to actually pull you to do it. Guess it's gonna leave me something to do. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Canon EOS M2 and how to install Magic Lantern on it. I promise you it's gonna be an easy tutorial, it's gonna be step by step, and we're also gonna compare it to the Canon EOS M and just see how the Magic Lantern RAWs differ between these two cameras. So, let's get stuck into it. Yeah. All right guys, so here I have mounted my EOS M card. And as you can see, it's all blank. So the thing we need to do next is go on to my Google Drive over here. I'll leave this in the description below so you guys can go ahead and check that out. It's called the EOS M2 build that I use. And we'll go ahead and download that. All right, so I've clicked the link and it says M2 build. Click on that and it'll come up with three files. So these two files and a folder. You need to copy all three of these onto your SD card. So we're gonna go ahead and click download, M2 build, save. All right, so we have the build here. We're gonna open it and it should come up with three files. So here we have them. We're gonna drag all three of them onto the SD card. And then we're gonna go ahead and eject the card. And that's it. All right, so I've taken the SD card out of the computer and I'm gonna put it right into the M2. So from here, the next step is to switch to one of the camera icons, either one or two, and that will help you to update your firmware. All right guys, so I have the Canvas M2 here and I'm gonna load it up right now. So I've got the SD card inside and I'm on the camera icon on the top and not the movie mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and click menu and update firmware. Make sure you have firmware 1.0.3. If you don't, I'll leave it in the description below for you guys to download. Now this is the same way you uninstall Magic Lantern. So you can wait 60 seconds and that will uninstall Magic Lantern and then you format your SD card in the camera. So we don't wanna uninstall. So we go ahead and click restart. All right, so once we're here, you can see that it's frozen. Now it's like this because we're in the photo mode. So we need to go ahead and go onto the movie icon up here and that will unfreeze the frame. So from here, go ahead and enter the Magic Lantern menu by holding the trash can button. And you can see all my presets are already made for you. So you got movie crop mode on. Uh, that needs to be on at all times. And then crop mode, you only have two options, 4K anamorphic or MV1080. This doesn't work too well, so you're pretty much left with 1080p real wide. However, I think this is a fantastic camera for YouTube work or for music videos and stuff like that. MV1080 is continuous raw and I've had absolutely no issues with this. I've used this camera for YouTube for such a long time. I'm extremely happy with this camera for that purpose. Now the raw movie, we've got 1736 by 976, 16 by nine and 14 bit lossless. And you can also do 14 bit raw, but they're completely the same. And you got 12 bit lossless. I just keep it at 14 bit lossless. Sound recording, keep it at 48 kilohertz. And that's about it from here. Now global draw, so this is what you see in the live view. So you can enable zebras. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that to 100. You can do crop marks if you wanna do 2.35 to one on screen overlay. Then we have the histogram, which will show you exposure levels over here. So I'm at 1.5 exposure value. You can also enable false color. So set that to Marshall and that will show you areas that are peaking. So blue means you're crushing the shadows, yellow means you're blowing out the highlights. Yellow and red are bad, and blue. So anywhere that's green or gray, uh, that means you're getting really good exposure. Now when I'm recording out in the field, I like to keep my ISO at 100, so I'll leave it there. And we'd go ahead and click record, so we see that it's continuous recording. And then click record again when you wanna stop. And you can see your frames in post, so the M2 is really good at this stuff. You can see your frames, it's going frame by frame. If you wanna skip it, you can skip frames. All right guys, so here I have the Canon EOS M2 with the Sigma 31.4. And I'm just gonna record a quick scene of myself in times three crop mode. 
and in just the normal mode. So to access the times for crop mode, all you do is head over to the movie tab, go onto the crop mode, tap it, and then it says here times three crop. So select that, half press the shutter, double press the menu, and then you've entered the times three crop mode. Now if you press the info button, you got magic zoom. So that will help you get your shots nice and in focus. So press info again and you can toggle between that. If you want to remove that, you can just go all the way down over here, display presets and just turn that off. All right guys, so here I have the Canon EOS M2 and the Canon EOS M. Straight away, you can see they're pretty identical. Go into the trash can menu, go into the trash can. And now we can see here in the modules tab that the M2 has modules and the EOS M doesn't appear with the modules here. That's because it's inbuilt into it. We don't have to enable each time. Whereas the M2, we can play around with these few things. Now on the movie tab, here's where things start to get different. Uh, we can see on the Canon EOS M, you got all these modes. We've got the 1080p mode, we've got the high FPS mode, 30 frames per second, all the way up to 46. And we've got 2.5K raw, 3K raw, 4K, and then anamorphic in 5K. This is what I use for the 5K time-lapse raw and it's just absolutely amazing. Now on the EOS M2, what you're left with is pretty much the 1080 mode. The 4K anamorphic doesn't work, it's not really stretched properly. So you're left with the MV1080. And in all honesty, this is absolutely fine for YouTube purposes, for vlogging, for music videos. This goes absolutely okay. I mean, I use this camera for my YouTube channel for a really long time, and I'm thinking about using these cameras again to shoot YouTube. But overall, extremely happy with the MV1080 for the just the normal stuff. Now, if you don't have any of these cameras, I suggest picking up the EOS M uh, because of all these different modes and they're pretty much the same camera. Uh, if you're a photography enthusiast, this has Wi-Fi transfer so you can shoot RAW and then send these RAW photos straight from the camera to your iPad or to your Android tablet, pretty much anything with a Wi-Fi signal. Now, if you have the Canon EOS M2 and you're thinking of picking up a backup, I will definitely go the EOS M. They're both continuous RAW, uh, so if I get out of this, and then select 1080 on the EOS M. Click record and you'll see that they're both continuous roll. So they're both appearing to record perfectly. And honestly, I've shot for more than 10 minutes. None of these have skipped a beat. So apart from these two differences, they're pretty much the same camera. Uh, they're both good with monitors. I've got the EOS M up and running and monitors work perfectly with this camera and the monitors work perfectly with the EOS M2. And that's pretty much it. So that's it guys, hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully now you've got Magic Lantern installed on the Canon EOS M2 and you've got it up and running. Any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to check it out. Don't forget, check the description. I've left the build for the Canon EOS M2 as well as the firmware. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll be sure to make more awesome content on this channel. So stay tuned for that. See you guys.